What up, what up, Wimbush here. And most recently, I got to work on a hit TV show, Outdaughtered, for the TLC network, doing the main title sequence and the logo design. And with this main title sequence, it was essential to be able to take images of the girls over the years, because this is going on 10 seasons now. And so they wanted to be able to show the growth of the girls as each season went on. And so in order to do this, we wanted to make it modular so that with each season here in the future, like I started with season nine, we updated for season 10, but you know the kids are getting older so we wanted to be able to take more recent photos and be able to drop those in there so that we could render them out and put them into the newer episodes and so in order to do that facial morph right there i found this program here called Avrosoft phantom morph now i know it's like an archaic old looking design like something straight out of windows 95 and if i even come up here to help come down here to about phantom morph I think the last update was around 2017. So this isn't a new program. And of course this isn't sponsored because I don't even know if they're around anymore. Like if I come up here to help and actually come down here to the homepage, I mean, even the old page looks like something old school, but I mean, it works for what I need it for. And if I come over here to download, there was a free trial in which I used that first because at first, I was trying out After Effects, but I needed to be able to move quickly and on the fly. And After Effects was just going way too slow for what I needed. So getting back into the program, let me show you some of the steps that I learned to get some really good facial morphs out of this program here. So first, I'm going to get everything set up here in Photoshop, but Photoshop is an essential. You can use any photograph manipulating software that you have at your disposal. But we're going to use my image here because I'm not sure legally if I can use the images from the TV show. So we're just going to use this one here. Now, if I come up here, the image, and I come down here to image size, you can see right now my size is 1080 by 1080. And so I know that all the photos that I want to have morph, I want to have within this size, which is going to be essential because if you morph different size photos, you're going to be able to get some decent results. But I found the best results is if you have each image that are going to morph into each other, have the same resolution. So I have this picture up here with myself and Mark Christopher Lawrence, good buddy of mine. You might know him from movies like Terminator 2 and TV shows like Chuck, but I'm gonna take this picture of Mark right here and morph it into myself. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key, left click and drag it in here. Now the reason that I'm actually doing this is because I want to align up the eyes as close as possible to the background image of myself there. So in order to do that, I'm actually gonna take my top layer right here I'm going to drag down the opacity a little bit so I can see both images in there. And then I'm just going to scale this up to where I can have Mark's eyes kind of aligned with my eyes right there. So let me drag this over like so. Let me bring this over somewhere around here because essentially I don't want to see myself in the photograph as well. So I'm just going to make this large enough that it covers everything here. And I keep the eyes around the level that I want them. So somewhere around there. And there we go with the journey to fill. I was able to fill in a blank space and even take my hat out of the shot right here. So we're going to go with this image right here. So I'm just going to come over here to file. And I'm just going to save this out as a PNG. So quick export as a PNG. And with that saved, now I'm going to go back over to Phantom Morph. So with Phantom Morph opened up, I'm going to come over here to file. Come down here to new project wizard. And then create a new project. So I'm going to click on next. And then right here where it says morph, I'm going to click on next again. And then for the first image, let's actually click on Mark's here. So I'm going to take Mark's image and have him morph into myself. So I'm going to click on open. And then for the second image here, I'm going to click on this again. And then I'm going to click on myself right here. Click open. And now you can see on both of these boxes, we have those images that we saved out. So here you can see where it's really essential that we had it at the same resolution because it's going to have it crop within that same 1080 box there. So if I'm going to click on next here, and then I'm just going to ignore these and click on next again. And then right here for movie length, we can have it go maybe over 30 frames. So this is going to be a duration that the morph is actually going to happen in. And for the movie size, since I made everything 1080, it's going to morph everything within the 1080 movie there. So I'm going to click on next now, and then I'm going to click on next again. I don't want to add any type of effects or anything. And right here, this is really important. We want to come over to face locator, and this is where we're going to set everything up. So right off the bat, you can see that it set everything up fairly well right here. Like you might have to make some adjustments by clicking some of the dots here and just making sure that you're getting a good portion of the head in here. 
So I'm just gonna move these over accordingly. And as you can move them, you can see that the whole image is kind of moving here because it wants to try to keep everything as coordinated as possible. So somewhere around there, it doesn't have to be perfect, but this is pretty decent. And then I'm gonna come up here and hit next and just see what it does for my photo here. So I might just have to make a few adjustments in here, something like so, somewhere around there, move this out a little bit like that. Okay, so I think that's gonna be good right there. And then you wanna click apply all. So once you click this, over here, you can see the facial morph right there, the targeting and everything. And then on this image as well, and then down here is where all the magic happens. So if I click back on here and click on play, you can see that the image is morphing in there. But you can see that it's starting to stretch down there a little bit. So you could come over here and make some of these adjustments. So I'll probably gotta do it at the top of the hat, somewhere around here. So I'm just gonna move these over like so. Some of these points here, somewhere like that. So if I slide this over, you can see that the eyes are matching one to one and even the noses are matching one to one too. So that's gonna be really essential for getting a good effect out of this. And that's basically it. So I did this for each one of the photos, sent it into DaVinci Resolve and did some time remapping. And from there, sent it off and finished out the main title from there. Now, a pro tip, if you're working for a client, a lot of times, if you would address this to them ahead of time saying like, hey, I think this program or this plugin is going to allow me to work faster in order to be able to give you guys more iterations faster and deliver quicker. A lot of times you can write that into your contract and get them to cover the charge, which is why I went with the deluxe version. So I was able to negotiate to where this was actually covered within the project and I didn't have to come out of my own pockets to purchase this program. I'll leave a link in the description. I'm not getting paid. I don't have any affiliation with this program but again i just thought it might be cool to let you guys know that something out there like this exists and until next time stay fresh keep creating and i catch you in the next video that's easy and take care